All right, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, today's video, as you can see, is going to be all about beam scales. Um, back when I was doing all of my powder dispenser comparison videos, uh, in the comment sections, probably one of the most requested things that people um, asked for was a video about my particular set of beam scales. Uh, this is one of the newer RCBS M500 scales. Uh, I bought them, heck, I think I bought them off eBay, actually, like somebody bought one of the big reloading kits and sort of sold some of the stuff they didn't need, and I, I think that's where I got this thing, but uh, currently, as of, let's see, March of 2021, I think they're going for around 80 bucks or so at Walmart, if you can find them, but I found them to be remarkably repeatable and accurate. Um, they're very sensitive. Most of the time, when you drop one kernel of powder in the scales, you will s see a noticeable difference in where the, uh, you know, the line lines up there on the pointer. Um, you can go back and watch all those videos I've done, like the the Charge Master Lite versus the Hornady Auto Charge Pro and the Frankfurt Intel Dropper and all the all the different videos that um, that I've done comparing powder dispensers. And I always use this set of scales to sort of check and verify, um, you know, the accuracy of the dispensers. So. I'm just going to go over some of the things I've done to kind of making using beam scales easier for me. First off, the the most noticeable thing that you'll probably see in the videos is uh, I have a webcam and a Chromebook here uh, set up to where I can point this webcam at the little um, pointer section there on the beam where the where the indicator line is. That way I don't have to get down and squint and you know try to you know see the see how well I have the you know the charge weighed because you know if you do if you load a hundred rounds that way or a hundred and fifty like if you're going to a F class competition for a weekend like I do pretty regularly uh, you know that really fatigues your eyes and just wears you out having to do that. So let me see if I can get my Chromebook fired up here and I will show you my little setup. Um, so this is, this is what you'll have when you are all set up and good to go. All you have to do is just make you some kind of little riser block here that is, you know, pretty much uh, level with the pointer on the beam scale. That way you're not kind of like looking up at it at an angle or looking down at it at an angle, you know. And really on these scales, you can take the beam off and um, the there's another set of those little uh, pointers um, right there on the other side and you can keep adjusting the height of your block until you don't see the middle pointer. Um, if I could take my beam off without just absolutely disrupting everything, you can see that. There you go, that'll probably be easier easier for you to see there but as you can see there's another set of uh pointers uh, back there you can flip these scales around either way which is pretty cool you can uh you can have the needle end on the left or you can turn them around and have it on the right um and i've used them both ways just depending on how my reloading bench is set up so anyway there's that as far as this this particular brand of webcam goes that i have um this is a, let's see, a TechNet uh, HD uh, 720p webcam. It's, they're not expensive. I think, again, I bought this thing off eBay or Amazon. Probably didn't pay 13 bucks for it, if that. Um, you can pause the video and see, uh, kind of use this as a reference to find them. Here is the, the barcode and the, and the part number for this particular model. I'll hold that there. So if you want to pause that and find this particular one, which there's a good chance they might not even make this thing anymore. But here's the key, or at least what I think is the key on webcams. You want one that has a manual focus. In order to focus this webcam, you actually turn this um, the lens area there. And that's really handy, I think, more so than a autofocus webcam, because when you when you start putting the webcam like really close to the uh, to your scales, um, 
an auto focus one lots of times will just jump around from where from the point that it wants to focus it might try starting it might try to focus on you know the frame of the scale rather than the pointer or whatever so you can you can get this thing dialed in really close and then you can just kind of slide the the camera in and out and until it's you know crystal clear but you can watch let me see if i can zoom in here a little bit you can watch this area get a pointer too here we go here's some tweezers um now that's probably not the greatest pointer actually um all right here we go you can watch this area right here of the um on the scale you can actually watch it start starting to come into a clearer focus like right there that's starting to get pretty sharp you can actually start seeing the kind of the teeth uh you know the machining marks on the on the edge of that thing um so again and then you can just kind of move the the camera in and out depending on where you want to focus there so that's why i would suggest getting a manual focus uh, you might find an autofocus that works great. I don't know. I could just see how that might be problematic. Okay, so the next big obvious thing that uh, you probably noticed that I've got going on here is I've got some pipe cleaners taped uh, in two different spots here on the on the scales, and these are just uh, just pipe cleaners uh like uh that you would use to actually clean out the stem of like um a tobacco pipe you know all sherlock holmes like or whatever uh now these are the real thing as far as pipe cleaners go you can kind of find two different types you've got the real thing which this is a cotton um wrapped pipe cleaner you know very very durable and nice and soft they also have the hobby styles uh, like you might find in a craft section or something for kids or or whatnot they're not as they're not wrapped as well it's been my experience that that they're not as good a quality as this and they're sort of like synthetic fibers and um they're not coated as well like you'll see a bunch of areas in the on the pipe cleaner that 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 isn't actually wrapped so i I prefer these um but i also just had some too so um you know that helped me decide to use these but anyway all i've done is just kind of bent this thing uh this this bottom one i just bent it sort of like this and then i turned the the end up sort of like so and that's what you're that's what you're looking at right there by the way these things are great for cleaning out dyes or just anything that's kind of a hard to get to area or whatever that's probably what i've been doing with this old one that's been laying around here um anyway and that's all i've done i just got it sit there and just took a piece of masking tape and taped it down and the reason i did this was because have you ever noticed like uh you know if you take a charge uh, you, you've weighed out a charge on your scale you pick the pan up and notice how violently the scale the beam just slams down um, th that kind of always got me wondering if I was just ever so slightly shaking the weights around, you know, like, um, it might just be minuscule, but again, you know, we're trying to weigh down to a kernel of powder. So, you know, the little things start adding up when you're trying to be that precise. Um, so anyway, that was the, the logic behind trying this i essentially just sort of created a little suspension system for my beam so when i take the the pan off it doesn't slam down it just kind of rests easily on those uh, on the pipe cleaner now the reason i have the one up high is it seems like in my experiences with with this set of scales that the least amount of travel the beam does when you're weighing powder um the better like it repeats better rather than let's say you took your pan off after you weighed a charge and you didn't have your pipe cleaners on there you took the pan off the beam slammed down and then the next charge you set on there was really heavy and the beam went really high like maybe all the way up to the max amount of its travel it always seemed like it took my scales a couple of extra ways before it settled down like if you had a set of check weights and you had zeroed your scale like right now i've got this one set on well 
it was. It was supposed to be on 44. Now it's on 44. Let's say you kind of zeroed your scales out with some check weights at 44 uh, grains, and you set a really heavy charge on the scales that just maxed out the beam. Well, then when you, if you took that charge off and then set your, your 44 grains of check weights back on there, it seemed like it wouldn't go right back to zero. But after I put these pipe cleaners on there and kind of limited the amount of travel that it, that it could do, that seemed to cure that problem. Uh, it's just been my experience. It may not be this way on every set of scales, but one would kind of think, you know, you're just dealing with a mechanical thing here that the more you can kind of keep it just working in that same little small space, probably the better because there's little floating bearings and stuff in, in here. Well, just, just a little floating bearings and you know, they might kind of get a little out of position when they go way high or way low or whatever. So I'm just kind of trying to keep everything working in a, a small amount of space as possible. And, um, and you can see how like that's about as far as it can read. And when you've got your webcam on there, it's real obvious that you're not touching the beam. You know, you can plain as day see light, you know, beneath, beneath there. And there's light on the, you know, on the upper end too. Um, but anyway, yeah, so there's a, that's the whole purpose of the pipe cleaners. Another thing that I like to do when using a beam scale is I just take an old like latex glove or one of these nitrile gloves or whatever, and I like to wear it on the hand that I'm handling the powder pan with just because I tend to sweat and, you know, my fingers and stuff will get a little bit sticky and I don't really want those oils or sweat or whatever sticking to the powder pan um, because, you know, water is a heavy thing. And, you know, you might start eventually, if you get enough oils and stuff on your pan, you might kind of start throwing the, the charge weight. I don't know. It might be obsessing over it a little bit. But the biggest reason I do it is just so my hand don't stick to the pan. Because lots of times when I try to sit the pan down, my hand, my finger will stick to it and I'll pull the beam down, um, you know, more so than, than if it would just release. So another, another little thing I like to do there. Okay, last of all, as far as the computer goes here, this is a Chromebook. Uh, let me see, I think I've got the box to it right here. I might be able to show you exactly the model I have. Um, uh, Chromebook X360, it's a uh, HP. Uh, it is a uh, like a convertible one that will go into a tablet mode, obviously. Which And that's really convenient because... Like if you had a trickler that you were using, you could set the trickler up right here, trickle in, and you can kind of watch the kernels of powder fall in while you're watching the beam move, you know, at the same time, which is which is really the way to go. Um, the closer you can get this down eye level to like where you're watching kernels of powder fall into the pan, just the less fatigue it is on your eyes if you are you know, loading, like I said, 100, 150 rounds or more. So um, the reason that I that I have a Chromebook and not just a straight up Android tablet is because my webcam and everyone I've seen so far has to be plugged into a computer via a USB port. I don't know, I'm not familiar enough with Android tablets to know if they have USB ports on them. Or, and if their USB ports are capable of powering a device such as a webcam. Um, I'm not quite that tech savvy, but I don't think that's the case. If you have an Android tablet that does have a USB port, it might be more for like importing files off of flash drives or playing videos or whatever. I don't know if they have enough juice behind them to actually power a camera. Um, they might, I don't know. Uh, I'd love to be able to use an iPad too, but again, you know, no, S no USB port. Um, so unless they make a wireless webcam system or some sort of configuration like that, um, I don't know about it. I'm kind of stuck with either a Chromebook or some kind of laptop or, or something along those lines.
Okay, and uh, last of all, one thing that I've kind of really gotten into doing lately is I've got a nice little set of check weights here. And this is the Lyman set. I thought I still had the packaging for them laying around here somewhere, but I've looked and I cannot find it. So anyway, this is just the Lyman check weight set. And, you know, typically most people would zero their, their beam scale with no powder in the pan. You know, they just re make it read zero. And, you know, that's that's probably okay. Um, but I kind of found it a little bit aggravating to, to do that because here's why. Let's say you were weighing 44 grains of powder, like something like a 308 charge or maybe a 6.5 Creedmoor or something. And you kind of wondered, well, are my scales still zeroed or have they moved or have I bumped them or whatever? Well, the only way you would know is if you were to move your check weights back to zero, both of them, and then see if it read zero, which is a real pain in the butt um, because you're always risking moving the scales around. And I hate for the scales to even move out of the little spot on the table that they're resting in right now whenever I'm using them for an extended period of time. So anyway, the idea I came up with was to use these check weights and try to zero the scale out to as close as you can the actual charge weight that you're weighing. So what I've got here, each one of these bigger ones are 20 grains. And again, I've used these in those um, powder dispensing videos too. Um, the the long two-sided ones here are two grains. So right there, I have 44 grains in the in the pan. So I'm going to set it on the scale, and I've not zeroed these out yet. So I'm going to turn the little, as well, as you know how it goes, you turn the little wheel over here on the, on the other side until you get the scales to read zero. And sorry if the angle is just a little bit funky on you guys. I got a kind of got a fancy Chromebook here back around Black Friday or whatever. It's one of those that the... Um, that'll kind of turn into a tablet. So I've got it folded down in, into, a, into a tablet, and we'll, I'll talk about that later. Uh, so anyway, I've got the, um, got the scales zeroed out pretty good now. So let's, let's say I was throwing a charge of like 44.2 or whatever was my target charge. Well, I would go ahead and still zero my, my scales to these check weights at 44 grains and then just move the little weight to the point two when I actually started dispensing powder. That way, if, say, I bump the scale or, or whatever and I just kind of started becoming doubtful if my scales was still zeroed, all I would have to do is move this little weight back to the to the 44, set my 44 grains of check weights back on the pan, and see if my scale is still zeroed, uh, rather than having to move the big weight and this one and just go through all that trouble and headache uh, and tedious work, you know, trying not to shift everything around um, just to check your zero. So that's that's something I like to do there. And while we're here, and while we are zeroed, um, just to show you, let me see if I can zoom in. Yep, right here is some um, IMR 4895 powder, like uh, that I've been using in all of my um, reloading, uh, or my powder dispenser comparison videos. Um, so let's just pick up one kernel here. Let's see if I can get this. So right here is just one kernel of powder. And as you can see, the scales are zeroed. Actually, I'm moving around and talking and everything so much that I've kind of, I think they've kind of got moving around a little bit. I may have even hit them there a second ago. I think I did hit them when I moved my ashtray around. Let me make sure I got these things zeroed. Of course, it really won't matter to, to show you this. Anyway, there they are. Here's one kernel of powder. This stuff is about the size of the kernels of Varget. It's really, really close to, to that size, or H4895. So it's not it's not like IMR4064 or anything where it's like pencil stick size powder. So anyway, here we go. I'm gonna drop this in the pan. And you notice how you just saw the the beam move there. It actually, you know, it's it's obvious that when you're zoomed in this much that you can really see it move. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'll, whoop, 
I'll take that one kernel of powder back out if I didn't just jar it out. There we go. It's always tricky trying to work while looking through a camera. All right, there it is. I got that that kernel of powder back out. There we go. And now I'll put the put the check weights back on the scale. And there they are, I think, back to about where I had it. Seemed like if I remember correctly, you'll be able to rewind and look, but I think it may have been reading just a tiny bit on the light side to start with. So anyway, here, let's throw another kernel of powder back in there. And I don't know how well you can see that. I probably should have zoomed in the other time, but... I mean, it, you see the scales move just with dropping one kernel of powder. And, you know, I don't know, maybe I got a, you know, a, a slightly above average set of scales, or maybe they're all this way, um, these uh, M500 series. So I've been really pleased with them, you know, for for the amount of money that they are, you know, like 80 bucks or whatever, you would probably have to pay three or $400 for a set of digital scales that would be this precise and this repeatable. Um, you know, again, there, I'll take the pan off, set it down. Notice how the beam didn't slam down and my hand stuck to it that time. So right there, it's going back to pretty much about where it was. It's just ever so slightly heavy. Now let me take that kernel of powder back out here. Let's see, I should be able to zoom out. Yep, there it is. I got it. I'll, I'll sit him back down right there. We might use him again. But... And as... Oh, let me zoom back in. As you can see... It's not reading as heavy as it was. And let's see, here's that same kernel of powder. And I'll zoom back in. So I'm gonna drop him back in the pan. And, and you can notice that the, you know, the beam rose when, uh, when I dropped that kernel in. So it's amazing how sensitive they are. Another resource that uh, you guys might find really interesting is a place called Single Kernel Scales. Uh, I'm not sure if he has a website or not, but the guy's name is Scott Parker, I believe, and uh, he specializes in accurizing beam scales, uh, making them more sensitive, more repeatable. Uh, now, this set that I have has not been to uh, Scott Parker to have his modifications done to it. It is just a, you know, a, a stock set of scales as far as the internals and everything go. But uh, I believe he has a Facebook page, so you can just look up single kernel scales on Facebook and probably find him there. Um, and he might have a website too. I'm just not for sure on what the web address is. But the guy's name again is Scott Parker. So anyway, I hope these are some tips and tricks that might come in handy for some of you guys out there that use beam scales. Uh, again, this is just uh, my experience and kind of what works for me. Uh, that's the great thing about YouTube is, uh, you know, it's a great place to share ideas and, and uh, get tricks and tips from people and ideas that maybe you wouldn't think of on your own. So hopefully you found something here that works for you and makes your uh, reloading go a little bit easier and uh, more enjoyable. Uh, if you haven't done so already, I hope you um, like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'll try to put some links down in the description to all those uh, powder dispenser comparison videos that I did that where I use this set of scales, uh, you know, pretty much as the uh, the check for how well they, uh, how accurately the the dispensers through powder. So um, anyway, hope you hope you check those videos out and uh, like those. And thanks again for watching. Until next time.